Hi, Tom Richardson for Boating Local, and today I'm back at Burr Brothers Boats in Marion, Massachusetts, where outboard technician Phil Batista is going to show us how to change the water pump on this 2004 Mercury Optimax outboard. Now the water pump should be replaced on an outboard or IO roughly every other season. And the reason why is because the rubber impeller that spins around inside the engine and provides cooling water to the power head could fail or deteriorate over time. And that could cause a big problem if it happens to go while you're on the water. The worst case scenario. The best case is if they all break off, <laughs> they don't go anywhere, they kind of just sit there. Right. As mentioned, water pump impellers can become brittle over time, causing the vanes to break off and possibly clog the intake system. However, a more common problem, as Phil explains, is a lack of suction caused by a loss of elasticity. Yeah, yeah. Compared to, you know, like this, it's all, they're all straight, right? right? This is a brand new one, and uh, they develop impeller memory, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. So when these things sit in that cup, and when we take the lower unit apart, you'll see what I mean. When they sit in the cup, the blades are kind of bent over to one side, and uh, when they sit like that, they kind of lose their elasticity. Yeah. So they don't make, they don't have enough, uh, uh, the tension to rub against that to make that nice seal in the uh, water pump housing. So you're not getting the, the kind of pressure that you need. You, you can lose pressure. Yeah. Um, so that, that's the first thing I'm going to do is pop this little cap. That's going to expose a bolt down there to remove this. Uh, uh, this anode plate down below under the uh, anti-ventilation plate. To, uh, make sure the things in gear are in neutral. As long as you remember where it's at, I like to keep it in neutral. <clears throat> Take these nuts because these are starting to get here. Can leave right on here. Now we're gonna set this thing down. Just give it a, usually just give it a quick hit on a skeg, and usually that knocks it loose, and uh, she's ready to come down. You can see that was fairly simple. There's a couple little components here. Yeah. Once I slip this down, that you want to be sure is your, your your speed pickup, your pito tube, and you want to push down on that, on that little black piece of plastic right there. Push down on that. At the same time, I'm just gonna set the skeg on my lap be able to pull that tube right out of there. This is the uh, your coupler for your uh, shift, your shift rod coupler. And here's your drive shaft, and just like that, comes down nice and easy, it's not too bad. Mercury makes that stuff. Ready to start taking the water pump apart. saw them that's good it's been done before mm -hmm. kept up with the water pump service on this thing new kit comes with these and an installation tool That's your stainless steel housing. We're gonna reuse that. That does not come in the kit. Here's your wear plate. That's where your impeller rides on. Um, your water comes up through there. We'll just peel that up. Those little intake screens. There's a passage underneath this. And we'll have some gasket scraping to do afterwards. So yeah, it was just basically you get a razor blade and try not to nick the uh, the mating surface too much or at all, possibly you know, preferably. But just scrape up that gasket. You want a good, clean mating surface for the gaskets. So that way you're not because you can lose water through there. Sure. So you want to just keep it as nice and smooth as possible. Correct. So don't just go. Yep. Got it. Just taking a little bit of cleaning degreaser, soften up some of that gasket, and I just take a nice sharp razor blade and. Go over it, scrape up any remaining uh, gasket material we have left. You can see it looks pretty nice. And voila, we have a clean surface now to install the new gasket. So, um, 
Yeah, basically now what I'm going to do, I'm going to blow this out, get any little bit of uh, gasket that might have fallen into this little, uh, into the little recess right here. All right, watch your eyes. Phillips screwdrivers here. And there's holes, little dimples in the uh, carrier. And we just kind of walk it up nice and easy. It's, it's that easy. We'll slide that up. Look at the seals, they look pretty good. But we're here, we're gonna replace it. I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. You got this. <laughs> okay. All right, here's the brand new carrier. I'm gonna take some uh, mercury 24C. It's brown in color. And uh, apply it to the O-ring. Just a, a little bead. Put it on there, on the outside of the O-ring there, where it sits inside the gear case, as well as a little bit on the seals, on the inside lips of the seals. That way we don't damage the seals upon installation. I'm just going to set this aside because I'm going to have to clean off those drive shaft splines. As you can see, they got a little bit of uh, old grease on them. Clean wipe. Greaser, put it on the white. Get up there and you just clean it off. Caked on stuff. Just to aid in the installation of the uh, that carrier. I want to make sure we don't. Uh, we want to make sure we don't leave any on the top here because you don't want to. Having a hydraulic effect up in the crankshaft, you'll never get the thing bolted up. And well, you will get it bolted up, but you might cause a little bit of damage to the crankshaft, which would render the motor. So, so don't get. Make sure the grease is not on the very not, top. Not, exactly, not sitting on the very top. I just always rub my mm -hmm. thumb over it just to make sure it's nothing there. I'm ready to install that carrier. I'll just take that out. I always try to orient the, uh, the dimples on this carrier so I can remove it the next time. And we just slide it over nice and easy. All the way down. No special tool needed here. I'll just show you what I do. I think it's a 7 8 goes over that nicely. And I just tap it home nice and easy. And you'll know if it's not because you won't be able to get the wear plate down on there flush, so we're almost there. One of the drain screws because you get a little bit of oh. If the carrier does not fully seat, you may need to open the oil fill port on the lower unit to release the pressure. Okay, yeah, obviously you don't want to come in on I don't want to drain the lubricant. So we'll just crack that. See that? There was a little bit of pressure. <laughs> so now she'll go in the rest of the way. So now we have our gaskets laid out here and uh, we're just gonna set them down in place. It might take a couple of tries here. Yeah, I guessed wrong. We'll go this way. There we so go. It's important to, the so to have it on the right side. Correct. I mean, it's only gonna work one way because the whole the way the holes oh, line yeah. up, the bolt holes, oh, yeah. you can only install it one way. Mm -hmm. And if you want to... Okay. To ensure that the gasket and housing are installed perfectly, Phil pins. places two alignment pins in the bolt holes. So we have that down. Now, part of the kit. There's a, there's a, you can definitely feel which side goes down because this side's rounded. You can see a little bit of a chamfer on all these openings here. On this side, it's kind of sharp. And you want the, uh, the rounded side up. So we know that goes down there. Set that down there. Now we have the other gasket. Let's get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Rubberized side it goes up. I like to take a little bit of grease, put it on the back side of the key. Oh, I'm always <laughs> dropping stuff. Just enough to hold it. 
in the cutout right there. And it stays put. Nice. To aid in installing the new impeller, Phil sprays the housing with soapy water. Just get and uh, basically you gotta kinda get your orientation correct because you want the impeller blades rotating in the right direction. Uh, the drive shaft is gonna be spinning clockwise, so we want the impeller vanes to be oriented clockwise. So basically you got your uh, impeller housing here, we got it all soaked up, and we'll just kinda force it right in there. That one just kinda got bent the wrong way there. Spin it, seat it. I usually put the keyway up front. That way I know that when I slip this assembly down onto the drive shaft, I know that this is gonna be 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and you just slip that on there and down she goes. I would just kind of make sure that get the key lined up. Might have to. There we go. Yeah, I like to put a little bit of dab of grease on them just to so they come out the next time. We'll get that in there. We'll get them all greased up first and set them aside and we'll Is it okay to be dropping names like that? I just want to get these. Uh, just want to get these things just, just hand tight, not too crazy. Okay, so now we're going to torque this down. 60 inch pounds. Confirmed it in the manual. Going to crisscross pattern. Hasn't clicked yet, but I just want to tighten them all down equally. Come back here. Click. Clean up some of this mess here. Just a little bit, hit it with a little degreaser, just to make sure everything's clean. Take this shift rod coupler off, because we're going to install that on the uh, on the shift rod coming down through the, the midsection to aid in installation. We're just going to clean some of that old grease off. Let me just throw a little dab on there. Again, you don't want to put too much in there for the same reason we didn't want to put too much on the top of, on, or any on the top of the drive shaft because you, know, you have two pieces meeting in this coupler and if you got grease in there it's not going to go anywhere you're not going to push it out so we just want to be uh, sparingly with the grease you don't want too much just put that down slide it down about there and they give you a little installation tool and they just want you to push that thing all the way down get that out of there just till it touches. Okay, so now we're ready to take this out and put it back in the engine. We got the gear case back. Um, there's a couple of things we're gonna check on the uh, midsection of the uh, outboard before we throw the uh, lower unit back up and in. Um, one of them is this little joint that connects the water outlet of the water pump to the water tube that delivers the water to the engine, uh, the cooling water to the engine. There's an O-ring right there that we're gonna replace, and it is part of the kit. I'm gonna have to dig it out with a pick or a screwdriver. Or have a handy dandy little pick tool here. and Just dig it out, there it is. Um, did I bring the kit? Old O-ring, new O-ring. And we're just gonna place that in there. Try not to stab myself with a pick. And uh, that's it. Grease, grease is your friend, especially in a salt water environment. There's one up here. And, oops, there's another one. Let me just put a little bit on there. And we're gonna install this on the lower unit side of uh, the engine. So, I'll put that right there. It'll aid in, uh, installing the lower unit, getting everything lined up. And we're gonna take this piece off, the shift rod coupler, and we're gonna put it on the other side. At least that's how I do it. It just seems to make a heck of a lot more sense to do it this way. Um, let me see, I'll throw a little bit of grease up in there too. Again, yeah, not too much. Oops. So that way, give us more of a an area in which to line up the uh, the shift rod, the water tube, 
and the pitot tube and the studs and <laughs> the 101T grease here. It's, it's a very good uh, blow water grease. We don't want to get too much on the threads. Basically, we just want to get the upper part of these studs so they don't uh, seize. Right, we're going to lay, lay a seal of uh, a bead of black silicone here right across this divider block. before we actually install the lower unit. Now we want to make sure the drive shaft goes up in the right spot. That's it right there. And just proceed all the way up to get about here. And I'll stand up, try to locate the uh, pitot tube. And we'll install that. Give it a little tug, make sure it's in there. And now we'll carefully install the unit. The drive shaft doesn't fully insert on the first try. You may need to have another person slowly spin the flywheel by hand until the drive shaft splines align with the coupler on the power head. However, only do this if the batteries have been disconnected first. It may also be necessary to manipulate the shift rod until the shift rod coupler aligns with the splines on the lower unit. I can Basically, if the gear case doesn't want to slide up and in uh, right from the beginning, don't tighten these up. You know, you got to make sure that you can get that kind of uh, mating between the lower unit and the uh, midsection before you tighten any, any fastener. So we're ready to just go ahead and loosely install these fasteners back on the uh, studs. Put the washer. Want to get everything started first before you tighten anything up fully right here at the back side of it just to keep uh, the salt from getting into the threads let me just put that in there just hang tight until we get everything else snugged up Right, we just finished torquing the uh, lower unit uh, bolts, the fasteners, and uh, uh, the, the bolts and the nuts to 55 foot-pounds uh, as per uh, the service manual. And uh, the only thing left to do is final assembly and final checks. Basically, we're just going to put the uh, zinc anode back under the anti-ventilation plate and uh, test run it and make sure it pumps water out the uh, telltale. All right, final step of the uh, operation here is we're just going to brief test run here, make sure it's pumping. Thanks a lot, Phil, for walking us through the uh, another water pump replacement. Uh, you got you make it look easy, but as uh, as, as, you, as we've seen, there's a lot more to it than uh, most people think. Huh? There, there is. It's definitely not for uh, an entry level do-it-yourselfer. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it can be involved, and it can be uh, it can be a handful for yeah. somebody who's never done it before. That's right. But but at least as as you showed us, there's a, there's other reasons besides just the water pump impeller replacement there's other things that you want to keep you know lubricated and you want to take a, a look at every once in a while so that things don't seize up and, correct yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's peace of mind just to take things apart just to get a look at them and uh like you said get things get a little bit of grease on it uh, so next time you need to take it apart it yeah. will come apart that much easier <laughs> right well great thanks a lot phil and uh, i'm tom richardson for voting local thanks for watching